Hello students, how are you? I am Joseph, I am going to present you geography for grade 12. In this lesson, we are going to see the chapter 3, Physical Geography of Ethiopia and the Horde. Under this unit, our main focus is on natural vegetation, soil, and the wild animals of Ethiopia. So, in this unit, the main objective of this subtopic is to make you uh, uh, to understand the natural vegetation of Ethiopia and how to conserve the wild animals, the natural vegetation and soil of Ethiopia. Students, so let's start the subtopic of chapter 3. So, natural vegetation and wild animal of Ethiopia. What is natural vegetation? Natural vegetation is refers to any original plant grown in and country covering area without the interference of human action. Students, as you know, the natural vegetation of Ethiopia is affected mainly by temperature, altitude, and rainfall. Based on altitude, we can classify the natural vegetation of Ethiopia into big five categories. These are the Afro-Alpine vegetation and sub-Afro-Alpine vegetation. The second group is forest. The third group is woodland savanna. The fourth one is steppe vegetation. The fifth one is desert and semi-desert vegetation. Okay, students, as you see this map, this map shows the distribution of the five categories of natural vegetation of Ethiopia. So, as you see, see this map, on the highland parts of Samin mountain, on the central highlands of Shoa, on the southwestern highlands of the country, you can find the distribution of forests. And on the peak mountains of the country, Samin mountain, Bale, on Batu and other mountains, you can find the sub-Afro-Alpine and Alpine vegetations. On the rest part, if you see this one, on the red parts of the country, you can find the desert and semi-desert vegetations. Especially, xerophyte vegetations are found on these uh, lowland parts of the country. On the rest, in the Rift Valley region and on these lowland parts of the southwestern uh, of the country, you can find the grass and the baboon or the bafia forests, especially on the areas where the rainfall is somewhat better than on the desert parts of the country. Students, if you come to the, the southwestern highlands of the country, you can find the high amounts of forest coverage. And on the Bale Highlands, you can find also the forest coverages. Students, let's see this one, the variation of uh, natural vegetation based on altitude. If you see this one, the lowest altitude, 1,000, is taken as unstandard. And 4,000 meters is also taken at the maximum altitude of the country. If you see this altitude difference, on the lower altitude, you can find the acacia, and the mixed deciduous forests. <coughs> Above 2,000 meter, you can find the juniper woodland, the olea forest, and the anangeria forests. And on the maximum altitude, as I told you before, there is Afro-Alpine and sub-Afro-Alpine vegetations. Students. As you know, 
the amount of forest coverage in Ethiopia is getting decreased from time to time. As you know, in Ethiopia, 14% of the country is covered by forests before 18th century. But right now, less than 3% of the total landmass of the country is covered by forests. This uh, shows the amount of forest coverage is getting depleted from time to time. And there are some causes of this deforestation in our country. What do you think is the major causes for the depletion of forests in our countries? The first one is unwise tree cutting for supplies and materials in our country. The second one is overgrazing. The third one is slash and burn practice. Another one is fuel wood. Fuel wood. Another purpose is for the purpose of furniture and construction. So, these causes make the forests to be cleared from our country. Therefore, what we have to do to conserve our natural vegetation? Students, the mitigation measures that we, had, we have to take to save our natural vegetation is one, we have to conserve our natural vegetation. Two, capacity building and an institutional development. The purpose of this one is to make the society to conserve their natural vegetation. Students, as we come to another topic, that is the wild animals of Ethiopia. As you know, the natural vegetation of Ethiopia is already over, and let's come to the wild animals of the country. As you know, Ethiopia has high amounts of wild animals, especially Ethiopia have 277 species of mammals and 862 species of birds. From these species of animals, seven mammals and two, 25 birds are endemic to the country. Students, we can classify the wild animals of Ethiopia into different categories. The following are the types of wild animals. The first category is the common wild animals. These common wild animals are called animals which are common to every part of the country or every place of the country. You can take an example like hyena. The second group is called the game animals. Game animals are animals which are hunted for sport purposes. These game animals are categorized into two groups again. The first group is the herbivorous, which are plant eaters, and the carnivorous. The carnivorous are flesh eaters. You can take some examples. Under herbivorous, you can list zebra, giraffe, and elephants. Under carnivorous, you can list the lions and cheetahs and hyena. The third category is the arboreals. These animals are called tree climbing animals. Can they list some of examples of these animals? Can take the chilada baboon and the apes. The fourth one is aquatic animals. 
these aquatic animals are animals which are found in the water bodies. Students, do you know animals which are found in the water bodies of Ethiopia? Some of the examples are fish, crocodile, and hippopotamus. Another group is birds. Ethiopia have high amounts of birds. From that one, the most beautiful bird in Ethiopia is flamingo. And these birds are confined to the Rift Valley lakes of the country. The last category is the rare animals or the endemic animals of Ethiopia. As you know, endemic animals are animals which are confined to only specific areas of the country. Students, do you know the endemic animals of Ethiopia with their location? If so, let's see the endemic animals of Ethiopia and where they are located to. The seven endemic animals of Ethiopia are listed as the following. The first one is Walia ibex. Walia ibex is found in the Samin Highlands. The second endemic animal is Mount Niala. In our country, we call it Yedega Agazan. This Mount Niala is found in the Bale Highlands. The third one is Chilada Babun. Chilada Babun is found in the Samin Mountain. The fourth one is Menelik Dukula or Menelik Bush Book. The Menelik Dukula is found in Shoa and Bale Highlands. Another endemic animal of Ethiopia is Swanis Hurt Beast or Korke. Korke is found in the Nechsar National Park and in the Sankale Sanctuary. Another, or the sixth wild animal, endemic wild animal of Ethiopia is Samin fox or Kaikabaro. This animal is confined to the Bale and Samin Highlands. And the last wild animal of Ethiopia is wild ass or Yedur Ahia. This animal is found in the Afar lowland and in the southeastern lowlands of the country. Students, as you know, the, the endemic animal of Ethiopia is going to be extincted due to different factors. What do you think about these factors which cause for the extinction of endemic animals of Ethiopia. The main factor or causes of extinction of wild animal in Ethiopia is one, the rapid expansion of farmland, settlements, and industrialization. Students, another important factor is the expansion of grazing land, the widespread practice of illegal hunting. Another factor is frequent wildfire. There is also a migration of wild animals to the neighboring countries. This is for the purpose of searching water and food in another neighboring countries. Therefore, what we have to do to conserve our wild animals, our precious endemic wild animals? The following are the way that 
we use to conserve our wild animals. The first one is to establish national park, game reserve, and sanctuaries. Students, do you know the difference between national park, game reserve, and sanctuaries? Students, let's see one by one. National park is a, a conservational or a conservational areas of wild animals in which legal hunting is allowed with restriction. And this restriction, killing the endemic animal is not allowed. Chepia have high amounts of national parks, especially we have large 12 national parks in the country. From this national park, Gambella National Park is the largest park in the context of aerial coverage. And the least national park or the smallest national park in the country is Sami Mountain National Park. Students, another thing is game reserve. Game reserve is similar with the national park except that in the game reserve, legal hunting is only allowed for the tourists by license. And Ethiopia have high amounts of game reserves. The third one is sanctuary. Sanctuary is also a conservational area for wild animals. Here, legal hunting is prohibited. It's not allowed to kill the wild animals. And this is the difference between the three of conservational areas. Another important conservation measurements are monitor and administer existing conservation areas properly. This is due to people cannot properly manage the conservational areas of the country. The third one is establish and implement strong laws that effectively prohibit illegal hunting. As you know, illegal hunting is the most headache activities in the countries. Another most important thing is educate the public about environmental protection. This is the key for all conservations. Another important thing is protect the habitats. And finally, educate and encourage local communities to protect their animals, habitat, and resources. As a citizen, all the peoples of the country should have to implement these conservational measurements in order to conserve our precious wild animals. Students, we are finished about the wild animals and unless we talk about the soil. This is the last topic of chapter three. Students, what do you think about soil? What is soil and how soil is formed? So let's define the word soil. Soil are the upper loose or unconsolidated material overlaying the earth's crust layer. This, the loose material of the crust layer is formed from water, air, organic materials, and inorganic materials. In short, you can say that these are the major components of soil. Students, 
how the Ethiopian soil is formed and from what they are derived. As you know, the soil of Ethiopia owe their origin to apparent rock materials. Parent rock materials are very important materials to form a soil. From the ingredients of soil, parent materials consist of 45 percent. Another important thing is climatic condition and vegetation coverage. These things may constitute for the formation of soil in general. Based on this one, the soil of Ethiopia is basically derived from crystalline volcanic mesozoic sedimentary rocks. From the three types of rocks, sedimentary rock is the important rock for the formation of soil because they can be easily weathered. Based on this one, according to the latest classification of soil made by FAO, there are around 18 types of soil in the country. From these 18 types, 85 percent of the country's land area is covered by the following 10 types of soils. These are Nito soil, Verti soil, Cambi soil, Yermo soil, Lito soil, Rego soil, Acri soil, Zero soil, Luvi soil, and Fluvisol. From these 10 types of soil, Nito soil is the largest soil type in aerial coverage. It covers 12% of the total areas of the country. Naturally, this soil is called the red basaltic soil. It is found in the rain-fed areas of the country. Mostly, it is associated with the heavy rainfall parts of the country. Due to this one, we call it the leached soil. It has high amounts of iron. Therefore, it's important for the production of insects and the coffee in the country. The second largest soil in Ethiopia is vertisol. soil. 